we step off on campaign once this bird's ready and we're downrange. Everything back home needs to be in balance. We're not gonna be worth a damn to each other or ourselves if we get over there and something's out of whack. Let's make sure we lock that down so when we're ready to roll, all our focus is on the mission. Lieutenant Rourke is the most moralistic person I've ever met. Leave two men here! The guy's just a born leader. Frag out! On me! When I was in the spring of my senior year at college trying to figure out what I wanted to do, and my father had sent me one of Winston Churchill's autobiographies about his early service in the military, and that book just hit me like a shot of lightning, saying that military service would really be a great place to begin. The SEALs was the next step that made sense for a spot to land and find a home. The reason I come talk to folks like you, the reason I come do this, is I think this very special covenant exists between the nation's warriors and its civilians. Um, I get to go do that job when that call comes in the middle of the night, and I'm gonna you know, kiss my kids uh, goodbye. I'm hopefully get one more night of sleep with my lovely bride and then go do the nation's work. And we want that call. I mean, don't, don't think for a second, we don't want that call to come. That's what we train and, and, and are bred and kind of born to go do. Um, but we do so, and I mean this sincerely, because of you. Um, I know brother, like firefighters like my brother are gonna be there to take care of my kids if I'm gone. I know police are gonna be there if there's some you know, violence being visited on my family and take care of them, and, and, and in all, very serious sincerity, people like you are keeping this American dream, you know, both at home and globally alive. It gives us something to fight for, and, and, and please don't forget it. You know, most recently I've been running all the training for, for SEALs, from the basic day a young man comes in, a young lion wants to become part of this brotherhood, up through the advanced training of sniper, hand-to-hand -hand fighting, communications, language, medical, all those courses of instruction. And we have a relatively mythic level of uh, attrition, which is, um, which is the amount of people that don't make it through the training. If someone says they don't want to get through our training or they're done, they've had enough, they ring this famous bell that exists in San Diego right at our training program. They come up, ring the bell three times, ding, 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 put their helmet down, which kind of designates the class they're in with their, with their, with their class number, and we get this graveyard of helmets that line up as, as, as the, the classes go through the training. I could talk about leadership for a week. I mean, this is a subject I love, but I kind of hit it from a little different angle because I think a lot of leadership are the exact principles that everybody, everybody puts out there. All good, but, but I kind of take it from a different angle. I think leadership is a little bit about being alone. Um, I think you have to have a separation from your troops so you can have that strategic vision and that you know, kind of 50,000 foot view of what the culture is doing and where it's going so you can kind of guide and navigate that ship. The problem with being alone and isolated is, is you have no accountability. And I, and I don't personally believe, I can think of it not in exactly the same terms, but in a military context, I, I don't think a board of directors gives you exactly that. It has to come from the troops. The last part that I like to talk about in the world of training is, um, I think one that companies have the hardest time figuring out, and I think took me the longest to figure out, and that's the constant improvement in the elite environment. Um, you know, how, we're in Chicago. How do you make the Bulls when Michael Jordan's there better? I mean, how do you get better after winning so many championships and sustaining that performance over a long period of time? I think everybody's looking for this, this kind of secret. And I, I've got a little example. I think I know how to do it, and this example I think helps highlight it. Everybody just in your seats, nobody get up, but everybody reach towards the ceiling, just both hands above your head, just kind of reach towards the ceiling. Okay. Now kind of loosen your shoulders, loosen your back, Shake it out and reach as high as you can. Get as high as you can so I can see everybody's at their full extent. Great. Now everyone give me another inch. It's crazy. You can put your hands down. I mean, everybody just got another inch. So either you utterly disrespect me as a leader because I just told you to reach as high as you can go, which I don't think is the case, or there's something going on there. And, and what I think it is is that inch is this almost primal down to the you know, core of who we are as, as animals. It, it's a reserve that we keep. You have this reserve that you can tap into when, when needed. Now, you can't get that inch every single time, but that inch is your elite level continued success and movement, right? If you can find that inch in any, any department in here, I mean, it doesn't, I don't need to know anything about what you do, but you can think of, okay, where is that inch that I need to scrape and claw for and improve on, and, and there's no way you don't get better. I mean, it's just this very, very unique um, opportunity. I thank you very much.